Okay, this morning we're going to go to uh, uh, John chapter 3. John chapter 3, it's a common uh, scripture that we often read of, but it's also something that God wants to speak to us. And this, uh, uh, John chapter 3, why don't we read uh, 13 and 14, because it's got some important stuff that's in there. I know you know the rest of the, uh, the 1 to 12, but 13 and 14, why don't we all stand right now and let's just take this time to read the word of God and uh, uh, just hear his word right now. It's verse 13 to verse 14. Let's read it together. One, two, on the NIV translation. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, if you haven't got your Bible, you can read from up here. And I want you to read it, read it nice and clear this morning. One, two. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Let's say lifted up. Lift it up. Let's say it again. Lift it up. Who must be lifted up? Jesus. Or who else? The Son of Man that is mentioned there. Okay. Who must be lifted up? Jesus Christ. Okay, you may take your seat right now. You may take your seat. Now, in this uh, story, we have in uh, verse 1 that this is, there's a man that came in. He's a Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus. Let's say Nicodemus. Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus was this man come in. He was a Jewish uh, a, a ruling council, one of, a member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus Christ and he said to Jesus Christ, We know that you are a teacher from God. Now, let's say teacher. teacher. Uh, so, like, like he's, he's building something in here. I want you to understand this. And he says, We know that you are a teacher from God. And for the things that, for the, the science that you have performed, let's say science. science. For the science that you have performed, no one could ever do this if they were not from God. Now, no one could do this if they, they were not from God. Now, here, here this verse 3, Jesus comes and he says, very truly, let's say truly. truly. Uh, when he puts a very there, a very truly, obviously it's something, there's some truth there. And Jesus says here in verse 3, that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are Born again. Let's say born again. Born again. Uh, let's say born again. Born again. Uh, I want you to turn to the person next to you and say, wake up. Uh, that's it. Wake up. Because this word here, born again, uh, uh, many take it loosely. But uh, we need to know, we need to go back to the basics and know that, that we need to be born again. Now, in this, in this particular story, uh, this can relate to each and every one of us. Because we have here a man that's not only an a influential man, he is also a man that, uh, that, that many people look up to. Now, you look at it in verse 1. He's not only a, a Pharisee, but he's also a Jewish ruling council member. So he's a, he's a great man. Jesus de declares it in verse 10. You'll find it there where Jesus says, you are a teacher. Let's say teacher. Uh, a teacher of Israel. And how can you not know these things? So even this man is not only an influential man. He's a man that uh, is just like me and you. Uh, they come to church. But this is the top of the, the range. You can't get any top or higher than this. And he comes to Jesus and he says, uh, uh, that we know that you are a man of God. We know that, that, that all these, these miracles that you have performed, not only you have raised the dead, you have uh, uh, you've raised Lazarus from the dead, you have actually let the blind see all those who have come to you. And we definitely know that, hey, this man is, uh, is not a normal man. He is actually not only man, but he's also God. There's something about him. Uh, and so he comes at night, he doesn't come during the day, he comes at night, obviously, like, Bobby wants to hide himself from everyone else, that's just uh, assumptions. Uh, because, like, no one wants to see him, even as Jewish ruling councils, hey, maybe this guy, you know, um, what's he doing with Jesus? He's a Pharisee like us, and he's coming around to check this out. But also, you can also look at, from another perspective, that he is coming, he wants more time to find out about this stuff. Uh, and I want to see what has what, what this Jesus got. And Jesus turns around and says to him that you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. Now when we look at this, I want you to understand some of the scriptures. That even, even through this, I want you to know too as a church. And when we come to church, uh, I know that there are many great uh, preachers that are out there. And they preach the word of God. I take my hat off to them. Sometimes it's a bit simple. But at the same time too, we need to know that church is about learning the word of God. Can you say amen? amen. Now, it's not about us. If you take your perspective of yourself, but you, you, you put your perspective of, hey, God, I know that I've got my issues, but I need to learn the word of God. Something great will happen in your life. Can you say amen? amen. And, and now this man come through and he had all the stuff sorted out in his mentality. You'll find it in Ezekiel 
chapter 37, the, the mentality of these Pharisees is, hey, look, now one is God is gathering his people together. This is one of the great things. That's one of the promises that God is bringing in, in through this that he had his, in his mind. Now, how do we know this? It's because Jesus says, you should know these things. Now, so already in his mentality is something that he knows. He knows the scriptures. He knows the Moses from all the way to the prophets. And he's got in his mentality and Jesus knows what's in his mind as well. So in his mind, let's see what's in his mind. In uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, in his mind is that Israel is going to be gathered together. The second thing that is in there, there's going to be a great transformation, spiritual transformation that is going to take place. And it's already taking place. Why? Right? Because all the Pharisees are in there and they all know the word of God. And these guys are the top of the line. And here all of a sudden Jesus comes around and he's like, going, hey, all these miracles are taking place. And it sort of changes the game a bit. Yeah. And the, those who thought, hey, I got this, I got this thing, not only I've got this, I'm also one of Abraham's seed, that I'm born from this, automatically, I'm straight to heaven. In my mind, it's like, hey, when I'm born into Israel, like, uh, I'm straight away, I'm straight to God. In their mentality, it's like, when all the, the, the Jewish people die, it's that Abraham is waiting there for them to come home. They're waiting for them, oh, yeah, he's there, that's in their mentality. Already transformation has taken place. Already there's the word there that God is already gathering him. The third thing that they're waiting for, all I'm waiting for is just the Messiah to come through. And he say amen. amen. So in his mind is going, okay, I know all this. I've got all these two things. All we're waiting for now that hasn't been fulfilled is that the Messiah has to come. And now he's, he's sort of like pinpointing this, this gap. Jesus, I'm going to hit this gap. You know, um, maybe he's the Messiah. I think that's where he was, he was leading to this. And all of a sudden in verse 3, Jesus changes the game and he says, Unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot see. First is see right there. And uh, in his mind, like, what? Uh, in his mind, and that, that's like us sometimes. It's like we can be uh, uh, people that come to church. We can have all our spiritual knowledge, we can have all this, but unless we are born of the Spirit, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? amen. That's the crucial Christian for, for each and every one of us. Have you got the Spirit in you? Can you turn to the person next to you and ask them, have you got the Spirit in you? Now, I want you to ask them, because many can be sitting here right now, but really the Spirit of God is not right there with you. But here Jesus says, unless, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he goes like this in verse 4. Hey, wait a minute. This whole thing is not only turned upside down. Jesus is, it's almost like, a, is Jesus speaking on something new here? Uh, but here Jesus is going to build this up. And, and, and he says this, how can a man be born, you know, when he is old? How can a man be born when he is old? And, uh, and, and say, surely a man cannot enter into his mother's room. A second time. Let's say second time. Second. Now straight away in your mind, yes, same thing. I can understand what Nicodemus is saying. How can a man fit back or go back, enter into his mother's room a second time? And Jesus says, here he comes with a more powerful one. Very truly I say to you, unless you are born of the spirit and the water, you cannot enter now. Let's say enter. Now, not only see we got in verse 3, but now you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he says here, he topped it up in verse 6, flesh must give birth to the flesh and the spirit must give birth to the spirit. spirit. Let's say spirit. spirit. Let's say spirit. spirit. Now, are we moving by the spirit of God? Because yeah. you can say, yes, I can wash myself past the sealer. I can, I can wash myself. Yes, you can wash yourself and you can enter into the kingdom of God, but you cannot give birth to yourself. Uh, you cannot rebirth a spirit within you. You need someone to do that for you. Can you say amen, church? Amen. And who is that someone? Let's say Jesus. Jesus. Now, Jesus wants to do something new in us, in our, in our lives today. And that's our topic this morning is new beginnings. Let's say new beginnings. New beginnings. Now, I believe that God has got something new for you this morning. But it's new beginnings in our lives. And he's given this, this, this topic for us, not only that, a message for us. That moral and religious reforms is not enough. Did you hear that this morning? Amen. You can be a good boy, you can be a good girl, but it's not enough. Moral and religious forms is not enough. One must be born again. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Uh, one must be born again. I must be born again. 
If I were you, I would dedicate my life to Jesus every day to make sure, God, this is a new day. Yesterday's gone. Where am I today? Am I born of the Spirit of God? Can you say amen, church? Amen. No. If the fire is gone in our lives, we need to be born again. If that hunger and that thirst is gone from you, we need to be born again. If, if there is problems that come into your mind and, and, and situations that come into your mind and you say, God, I cannot handle this anymore, and you keep on pumping into that stress, you need something new. You need to be rebirthed. Can you say amen, church? Amen. What is that rebirth? You need the Spirit of God. Even I need the Spirit of God as a pastor. Even though I stand with you before you, but you know, I cannot do anything without the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? amen? Because we can jump up and down and we can say 2018 was an awesome year, 2017 was even a better year, but 2019 God is going to challenge us all the way through. And you're like, where are all these blessings gone to? And God is saying to us, we do need, need to regenerate. We need to repower ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to get into His presence. The reason why we, we are weak, the reason why we the things are going through our lives, God has a plan. He has a purpose for us. Jerome said it this morning. He says that, that, that we have a purpose. He is speaking the Word of God because God is saying that we need a new purpose in our lives. Can you say amen? amen. And that purpose is greater than us. It's greater than you. It's greater than me. But how do we tap into this? We need a new power in our lives. Power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Religious reforms, you can be good all you like. Be good. That's good. But make sure you tap into the Spirit of God. Make sure that that's not left out of your theology. Because you can be standing up here and everybody could be gone. And going, God, how am I going to do this? You can't do it. It's not by might nor by power. But it's by the Spirit. I'm going to take you to the promised land. Who believes in God and he's in the house? Amen. God is saying you need to be born again. Nah, you need to be born of the Spirit. The flesh gives birth to the flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. And God is saying to us that we need to tap into the Spirit of God. Why? So that you can see it from God's perspective. That even those problems that we're going through, God is going, I'm bigger than those problems. Now, I know that you are a religious ruler. I know that you are seed of Abraham. But guys, that's wiped off now. Uh, you need to be born again. Born once is not enough. You need to be born twice. Can you say amen, church? Amen. If we are not born again, we sometimes got to check ourselves. God, look, am I really saved? Why? Because First Peter says there that I, 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 I encourage you to make your salvation sure. Yes. Look at that. I'm saying make it sure. Don't think that I oh, yeah, maybe I'm going to heaven, maybe not. Maybe I'm, I'm in the spirit, maybe not. No, no, he's saying you got to actually make sure that you're in there by getting on your knees and saying, God, help me through. If there is sin in my life, this is the thing that separates me from God. I need to get down and say, God, help me through this. Even Nicodemus knows all about this, but he has come through and asked the question. And God goes, you need to move by the spirit. What does the spirit say? There's things in your life that you need to get rid of. And you're going, no wonder why there's so much stress. Because I've got bitterness against my, against my employer. Oh, let's not start with the employer. Let's start within the family. Maybe it's not the wife, but maybe it's one of your, your kids. I'm starting to pray for Gabriella now. Some of the things she really annoys me. They, they may be little, but God will go, check your heart. And I say, God, pray for this. God starts to search my heart. Search these things. I want to encourage you, get into that place, search that heart. Amen. Don't risk it. Don't risk it by saying, oh yeah, I need to go to, to church so that I can be pumped up. Nah, and all these good things that people say to me. I say, yes, you're an awesome thing. You're an awesome player. You're an awesome worship leader. You're an awesome person. Awesomeness. All this. And you start to rely on all those encouragement, encouragements. And I'm telling you, don't rely on those encouragements. Rely on God Almighty. Can you say amen? This is one day the man will turn and they'll go, oh, that wasn't so good anyway. And all of a sudden you start to go, there's no praise for me. Why? Because you're living on praise. Yeah. But God wants to take you to another level. Can you say amen? Yeah. Now, even when it's not, people are coming to say, man, you're an awesome cook. You're awesome. This person that you don't need that. I know it because I'm glorifying the King of Kings. I know it because my God is right there with me. I know it because God positioned me in this place. Now, I know that there's, 
like uh, things that God calls us. And you know, this is a challenge that I, I often look at. It. I want you to scrutinize your life carefully and look through things and say, where is my life going right now? Now look back at five years from now. Am I a person that is growing in God? Has my faithfulness in God grown? Look at that. Has my, 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 my being a good father growing in my family? Has my being a good mother in the, in the family growing? Has my love, has my words changed? Because like those things, God is marking on us. He's looking at it. What kind of person are you? Why? Because there's the Spirit of God that's right in there, that's seated in you. What kind of a person? Are you always moaning about things, complaining about this? Or when problems come, you say, God, I glorify your name. God, I'm lifting up your name. Why? Because he has a plan and a purpose for you. That when God places you somewhere, even if it's hard time, stick to it because God is not finished with you. There's things that he's trying to break in your life. Amen. And this is the stuff that no one wants to teach. They want to teach about the promises. Yes, I love the promise. But there's a big journey that I'm going to go through. And God wants to break up all the things that's in you. God wants to clothe you with patience. God wants to clothe you with self-control. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Even though you caught me into the spirit, you gave me this life. God, I know that it's challenging. All the things that come, but I'm going to praise you, God, for this beautiful wife. You know what? That's going to reflect on Because the Bible says this, but I'm not going to go through the wives now. I'm talking about this. This apprenticeship. And you know what I said? I wanted to give up. Many times, I wanted to give up. I remembered what Jacob said. I'm going to wrestle with you. I'm going to kickbox with you. Uh, he's doing all this thing with the angel of God. And he goes, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. How many of us have got the blessing of God? How many of us have got the blessing of God? That God goes, even through that pain, you've got to take it right through. Because God is not just looking about the, 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 the game to be finished. He's actually looking at you. Are you changing in your personality? Can you say amen? amen. Are you clothed with the power that's in you? Have you got the joy of the Lord even when things are not going well? <clears throat> Used to people not coming to church. Are you clothed with their patience? Because one day God's going to explode this church. Can you say amen? amen? At times when we see this, going to these conferences, all these words are given in this, this church that's going to be filled up. I've seen people say to me, Pastor Sila, I had a dream that I saw many people come. Oh, yeah, oh, don't worry about that. God's going to fill it up himself. Who believes that God's going to do something great? Yes. Uh, well, what is He doing? He's looking at you and me first. Yeah. Are we born again? Yeah. Uh, and He says this, the wind blows to wherever it blows. Yeah. And He goes, it blows to wherever it blows. And like you can see the wind coming, you can hear it coming, but you don't know where, know where it's going and where it's coming. And He goes, it's just like this when the people are filled with the Holy Spirit. It's just like this when we are born of the Holy Spirit. And the man turns around and he says, how can this be? Of course you wouldn't understand because you only got logic you only got your, your the Jewish law you only got the Torah you only got these things you know this but I'm saying to you that you have to be born again and Jesus says you are a teacher of the law in verse 10 and he goes we know what we speak of now we testify of what we have seen but still you do not accept our testimony Jesus says that no one has ever been to heaven Except the one that comes from heaven. That's him. He is the son of man. And then he says here in that verse 14. Just as Moses said. The serpent must be lifted higher. And it's just as well. The son of man must be lifted higher. What is this serpent? If you look at that serpent that Moses lifted up. It was like a, a, in Numbers 21. You'll find it in there. That serpent there is a brazen. Let's say brazen. Uh, let's say brazen. Can I hear you this morning? Let's say brazen. Brazen. Uh, brazen. That brazen must be uh, uh, lifted up or that, 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 that serpent must be lifted up. Brazen is judgment. Let's say judgment. judgment. And then when they put this on there, it's like uh, 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 that judgment uh, of that serpent must be lifted higher. The reason why they put that there is that whenever a man looked at it, I go, why does God say lift up the serpent? When we say serpent, it's like an evil thing, right? Uh, and they say, just as a uh, serpent has to be lifted higher, so the son of man must be lifted higher as well. Uh, and then when I looked at this, this is not only judgment that's there, but it's also that when people looked at it, it was like, like a, a foolish thing. It was like, how can I be saved by just looking at them? Uh, it's just like Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ being lifted up on that cross, that he became sin so that he will save each and every one of us. Can you say amen? Uh, not only became sin, but lifting up there uh, gives us a picture that not only that it's a, a sin uh, a judgment, but it's also sin dealt with. Yeah. It's that sin, your sin and my sin, totally dealt with. And here, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, John says here that, uh, that everyone who believes, let's say the word believes, believes. Uh, everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. And let's look at verse uh, 16. Why don't we read this together? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal have Eternal life. Have eternal life. Uh, for God so loved that world. Uh, world that's us, that who, so ever. Uh, so there, here we see this world that not only Nicodemus says, hey, wait a minute, I thought the promise was only just for us. But Jesus opens it wide open for you, for you, for you, and for me. God so loved the world, whoever believes in him. Uh, what is belief? Believe is to trust in Him, not only to trust in Him, but also to rely on Him and to cling on to Him. Let's say cling. cling. Now, are you clinging on to Jesus? Yes. Uh, for there is no condemnation on those who believe in Him, but those who do not believe in Him, they stand in condemnation. And here it says, whoever believes in Him, there is no condemnation, but whoever does believe in Him stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only begotten Son. Now look at this in verse 19, it says, this is the verdict, the light has come into the world, but the world loved darkness. Uh, the world loved darkness and they did not love uh, 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 the Lord here or they did not love the light. And why? Because their deeds were evil. Their deeds were evil. Look at verse 20. Everyone who does evil hates the light. Look at that. Everyone who does evil hates the light. Uh, and they are too scared to bring it into the light. Look at this. This is another thing that frees us up is that we're hiding things. Uh, God doesn't want us to hide things in our lives. God wants us to bring it to the surface. This is one most powerful thing because we are uh, human beings that like to say, God, I'm going to hide this. Pastor Sila can't see this. No one can see this. No one can see this. But I'm telling you, don't be like that. Bring it to the light. Uh, bring it to the truth. Look at that verse 21. Let's look at verse 21. It says here, but whoever lives by the truth, let's say the truth. Now, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. What has been done has been done through God. I appreciate people that come up and say, Pastor Sila, this is something that went wrong here. We are all human beings. We make mistakes. We are all human beings. Let me say that again. We are all human beings. We make mistakes. But one of the worst things is, God cannot bring healing if we don't bring it to the surface. There are people that, that they come through and are, I am smiling and um, you know, it's a good thing. But I'm telling you, it will soon come out. And when it comes out, all we can say is, I pray to God that repentance will take place. Why? It's not going to help us. The enemy is right there. He's right there, like encouraging us. Oh, yeah, 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 this. All of a sudden, everything is going, yeah, 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 everything's going well. Some of the questions like, how are you doing at home? He says, it's not that I don't want to know, but hey, that's what a shepherd is for. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? We're not going to turn around and tell the whole world, we're going to sit down, hey, we need to sort this out. We're going to bring it to the light. This is what Jesus is saying here. Uh, whoever wants to live by the truth brings it to the light. Why? So that what has been done in the darkness is plain before him and it was done before God and God looks over and he goes, hey, I'm going to heal this thing. I'm going to bring this truth through. Lying is the thing that Satan did. He did it right from the beginning. He said, your eyes are going to be open if you eat of this. Yes, there's half a truth. Their eyes were open, but they didn't, uh, they weren't blessed after that. They were actually kicked out of the place. And this same lie is coming through. I'm not saying that anyone's lying, but I'm encouraging us. Look at this. These are some of the things that are blinding us. Uh, blinding us. And the enemy likes to bring it through. Hey, look at this. Live that lie. Live that life. But God can see right in the depths. 
And you can say, hey, my blessings are coming through because this is all right through here. I can see your motives. Your motives are not right. I can see this. You're only attending this because you want this. And you say, amen. amen. You only come to church because you want this. You only want uh, uh, to be at, at, at this ministry because it makes you feel good. I'm encouraging you. Go the hardest way. There are places that God takes you. But God, I want to I wanna back out. And look, I want to tell you, when you build your car, don't ever build a reverse. There's no reverse when you're going for God. It's only a drive that's going forward. And you say, amen. amen. So even when the problems come, it's going to strengthen you. The problems are right there. You're right there. You're going, God, I can't break through this thing. And what do you do? You get on your knees. The lower you get, God is going to dig you deeper. And say, man, this is solid stuff that he's going through. He's going through a winter. And don't even avoid the winter. The winter right now is like, no one wants to come to church. But you've got to get on your knees and say, God, give me that strength that I will pick up myself and I'm off to church. Someone said that, oh, I've been doing this at home. I've been at home all day. I worship at, at home and I do this. I can just get on the, on the side of my bed and worship at home. I can go to the golf club and worship from there. Get over yourself. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 12. God says you're not going to do the things that you did over here in the wilderness. You're going to do a new thing that's here in the promised land. What is that? I'm going to choose a place where my name will be a dwelling. You will go to that place and you will worship God there. Where's that place? Right here in the house of prayer. Can you say amen, Jesus? Amen. So let's not be baby boomers and be like all the rest. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I got this. I want to enjoy church. Yes, you enjoy church, but enjoy worshiping God. Enjoy breaking through. Enjoy seeing. Lord, I'm the same person again. When people see me after this five years, it's like, man, that guy has just climbed heights, higher heights. It's like things he could never do. Why? Because he trusted in God. The day of salvation has come if we trust in the King of Kings. Can you say amen? amen. There's a guy that's out there. His name is Israel Falau. Constantly, I'm praying for this guy. God, in your name, that these people that are that are that are going against it, I've heard all the opinions, even Michael Jones and all these guys, they said you need to be sensitive with the way you preach. Jesus was never sensitive. He got out there and he spoke it in their faces. Even leaders were going against them and saying, Hey, look at all this. And I said, Well, good on you, but the guy is stepping up to speak the truth. And he goes, All these lesbians, homophobic, are going to hell. He just put it out there and the whole world is against them. But it doesn't matter, you don't need the whole world, you need God on your side. He's now suing the rugby team for $10 million. Ah, again, it's going to drain out the whole system. But you know, when you're faithful to God, God is right there to back you up. Can you say amen? amen. The whole world can be against you, but God Almighty is going to hold you in your hands. In His hands. Not your hands, His hands. And He's going to come through. I pray that every, even sportsman, People will come for you because we are in a world now, church, that God is going to challenge us. And I want to encourage you that the reforms are coming to church. God is going to start testing this church. What are you? Are you living by the Spirit of God? He's going to test us. He's going to test you. He's going to test me. And I can tell you this truth, that many are going to fall away if they're not gripped onto this Word of God. Many are going to fall away. Let me say that again. Many are going to fall away. And what God is saying, we need to humble ourselves, come under His Word, be powerful Christians. Uh, we need leaders that even the few of us that are here, that God is already training you, you're going to pick you up and you're going to go out plant a church. It's all for His name, can you say Amen? amen. Uh, people said that it never can be done. Even Pastor Mark come through and he said, Sila, how did you buy the house next door? I know the loans, I used to work in the bank. There's no way you can get it. And I said, it's not about us, it's about the King of Kings. And God's going to expand territories, more territories, more territories, more territories. It's going to bring more leaders in this place. It's going to bring more marriages, great marriages, great people that are going to come through. But it all depends on us. God is saying, can you receive this blessing? Can you stay in this place for a little while? That I'm going to test you. I'm going to break you. All these things are going to be broken off. And there's a new diamond that's going to come through for the glory of the King of Kings. Amen. Who wants the big picture? Man, I want the big picture. I don't want small pictures. God, I want big pictures. Uh, if not, Lord and Father, once you finish with this, move me. Move me so that your name can be lifted higher. And I can tell you right now, 
even as we depend on God, God's going to do something great in your life. It's going to move not only from your life, but also your kids' kids. And it's going to move on to generations to come. Many more blessings is going to come. Think of the bigger picture. Who wants the King of Kings? Yes, I want that in the name of Jesus. Why don't we stand this morning? Hallelujah. Father, God, we...